Hello, William. Thank you so much for joining Asian Art in London. I'm missing out on Asian Art in London, being stuck in the wilds of Lake, of Lake Como. So it's very nice to join you virtually, even if I'm not there in person. Yes, we're very jealous. And thank you for participating in Curated By. We'll let you uh, take it away and tell us about your selections. So one piece in particular that blew me away and, and my first choice and, and favorite thing if I was to loot uh, Asian art in London, go around with my swag bag, the piece I would definitely uh, uh, take away to Como with me would be the stunning head of the future Buddha, Maitreya, uh, in Johnny Ashkenazi's gallery. It's just a head uh, against uh, a halo uh, with two heavenly uh, uh, apsaras or, or gandavras uh, holding um, laurel wreaths or uh, turbans, but it is a perfect summation of all that is most wonderful about Gandhara art. This, of course, is this, this school of sculpture, which uh, is found today in the most unlikely setting of Northern Pakistan and uh, Afghanistan, and is the moment that Hellenic and Roman uh, sculptural influence meets uh, the art of India. It's the first fusion art in Indian history, really. And in the second or third century, you suddenly have, for the very first time in history, the Buddha being represented in his human form. Up to this point, Buddhist art from the, about 100 BC had shown the Buddha as a symbol, as a pair of feet or a turban or a, a tree. Uh, but it was the influence of the Greeks and the, the, uh, the classical Western tradition of sculpture that suddenly transformed the Buddha uh, into a human being. And not just a human being, but very clearly in, in, in the case of uh, particularly this wonderful Maitreya, a prince. Uh, and it is uh, a, a, a reminder that the Buddha uh, was from uh, a royal household. This is an incredibly aristocratic face. Um, the Maitreya is always shown with a sort of toned body as if he'd just come out of a, uh, a very long gym fitness regime. Uh, but he's, of course, a hugely spiritual figure. This is the Buddha uh, of the future, residing in one of the distant Buddhist heavens, waiting to come and save mankind. And he's in this trance. His eyes are half closed, half open. Um, he's waiting for the moment when he'll be summoned to come and bring Buddhism back to a world that has forgotten it. Uh, and it's exquisite. It's a complete masterpiece. And in an odd sense, you don't miss the body, which uh, would once have been, you know, two thirds of the sculpture. It feels very complete in itself. It is an incredible, incredible piece. I, I, it's my favorite, I'd say, of, of everything I've, I've seen online in uh, Asian London. And this is the one I would definitely take first. <laughs> <laughs> Log it up, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> My second choice uh, is from the Rita Dixit Gallery, which is a gallery I've never been to and, and certainly will be now visiting in the future because she's put up uh, a wonderful selection uh, of 18th century miniatures, of which my favourite is the Asvari Ragini, painted in Murshidabad around 1780. Now, um, these Ragmala pictures are very complex, interesting representations of musical modes. Uh, and they, they first start in the Deccan uh, in the 17th century. Uh, but this particular example is painted in the late Bengal school of Murshidabad. And Murshidabad is an interesting court. It, uh, it uh, uh, was a Shia court, uh, often ruled by uh, immigrants from Persia. Uh, and um, the Mughals appointed them as governors. But the state was overwhelmingly uh, Hindu majority, and so you get a very interesting interplay of, of Hindu and Mughal artistic influences. And this is a picture uh, of a tribal girl, which represents the Asvari Ragini mode of, uh, of music. Uh, and she's always shown wearing a kind of grass skirt uh, with a snake, but I've never seen any version of her uh, where she is surrounded by this one, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight snakes in it. She's become a kind of snake master. Uh, and it's an incredible piece. Uh, it has the characteristic gray background that you have in so many Mushidabad pictures. Often that gray is the Ganges and, and, and the typical uh, trope 
of uh, Mashidba painting is to place a character against the gray of the river, which, which runs against Mashidba. But uh, it's, it's difficult to see from this detail whether that, that is the river uh, or the sky behind her. But it's, it's a spectacular piece because it brings together the sort of detail and humanism and realism of Mughal portraiture, Mughal court portraiture, but it's mixed it with this very Bengali Hindu style uh, of the, uh, the Raghani's face uh, and that huge eye and the arched eyebrow uh, is very typical of later Kaligat and, and, and folk Hindu art in, in Bengal. And, and I've never seen the two coming together in quite this way. Uh, it's, uh, uh, she's half naked, she's deliberately shown as provocatively sexy, but also rather wild. Uh, and, that's, and that's what this uh, musical mode is meant to represent. It, it, it's, a, it's a wild rag uh, and an untutored rag. It, 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 it speaks of the jungles and wild places. Uh, and this is, I think, one of the greatest uh, Aswari Raganis I've ever seen. It's a, it, it's a real masterpiece and, and, and uh, very, very unusual. My third choice, uh, is from uh, Rob Dean's gallery, uh, and it is the extraordinary Shangri Ramayana page. Um, now, these don't come very often onto the market. It's one of the most famous uh, Ramayana sequences. Uh, it was split up uh, in the last century, and pages are dispersed around the world. Um, the Met has some famous examples, and uh, this is a as good a page as I've ever really seen from it. It has all the qualities that we go to for the Shangri Ramayana, which is these uh, fantastic Pahari Punjabi hill colors, uh, the, re the bright red border uh, reflected in the, uh, uh, the noses and the faces of Hanuman's monkey army. Uh, and they're seen here, I don't recognize the actual scene from the Ramayana, um, but the, the uh, Hanuman's monkeys, uh, or is it Sugriva's monkeys? It's difficult to tell whether it's Hanuman or Sugriva um, uh, who are looking onto this lake. And it's a lake filled with the most gorgeous pink lotuses and with fish. Uh, and um, it's an exquisite composition uh, with all the sort of folky charm that you find in the Shangri Ramayana. Um, but with even more than that, just the beauty of that uh, uh, lake. Uh, it's sort of oval in shape. You've got two fish popping out uh, and three gorgeous lotuses, all slightly different. Uh, three flower lotus flowers, two um, lily pads. And the, uh, the, the monkeys are, I think, washing their hands in the lake. Maybe it's after a battle scene. Uh, maybe it's a purification. I don't recognize the, uh, the particular scene. I'm sure um, others better versed in the Ramayana than I could identify it exactly. Um, I think it probably is after the battle scene because I, I mean, are the hands shown red? Is that, is that the, uh, the red of blood that they're washing off in the lake? Maybe after the defeating uh, Ravan uh, in the great battle of Lanka. Anyway, whatever the particular scene is, it, it's just an exquisite composition. And, the eye is caught particularly at the center of the lake uh, by the exquisite open lotus, which fills the center of it. And uh, the lotus is, is one of the symbols of Lord Ram. So it's, uh, uh, it, it has a sort of double meaning here. Um, I am a huge admirer of Pahari painting. Uh, it's my favorite school. Um, over the years, I've changed my taste. I once at various times loved Mughal, then, Deccani, but uh, increasingly I collect only uh, Pahari pictures and, and company paintings from this later period. They're much more affordable uh, than Mughal paintings and you can get a real museum quality masterpiece like this uh, for uh, relatively little still. Uh, so uh, anyway, that would definitely be my, uh, my third choice. My fourth choice is the exquisite Kaja dancing girl. Uh, in the Christie's uh, selection. Um, these come up very irregularly, uh, pieces of this quality. Uh, they used to be much more common about 10 or 20 years ago. They were, uh, you very uh, often used to see these large Kajar paintings on wood 
filling um, the the auction catalogues in Christie's and Sotheby's, but uh, they're far rarer these days for whatever reason. And this is a particularly good, large and uh, and delicious example. Uh, the dancing girl is fully clothed in Kajar uh, court costume. Um, she has got her hand raised. She's caught uh, in mid uh, dance, and yet it has the quietness and the stillness that one associates with Kajar art. That uh, it's Kajar painting is as quiet and as still as Egyptian sculpture. It, it, it's sort of unmoving and hierarchical and stiff, but also has this sort of wonderful quality of uh, of frozen beauty. Uh, and I love this this um, mixture that you get both in Kajar painting in Iran and in company painting uh, in India, where you have Western influences seeping in. You see it in the swags behind. Uh, uh, you see it in the in the pomegranates uh, which sit uh, uh, sort of over life size uh, on either side of the dancing girl, um, and. There is this odd mixture of this uh, of, of the very um, westernized portrait face and the body, which is almost like a sort of cut out uh, 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 freeze of, of 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 textile and jewelry. Um, it it's flat. It has no depth, uh, unlike the face and and the. Um, mixture of, uh, of of the very flat um, jeweled patterned body uh, and the exquisitely delineated face is is, is is very particular to this sort of art um, most of most Kajar pieces are portraits of course of men and particularly um, the bearded uh, Kajar shahs shown with all their sort of fantastic uh, facial forests which used to sort of slow down their chests. Um, the portraits of women are rarer and, and portraits of dancing girls rarer still. And, uh, and I think this is a particularly gorgeous piece and, uh, and one I wished that I owned. <laughs> so my final choice is from uh, the Francesca Galloway Gallery and it is the Maru setting out armed and determined to recover his beloved uh, and it's a Ragmala series from the Northern Deccan in the 1630s. Now, Francesca Gallery's gallery, I think, is uh, of all the galleries in London, the one that seems consistently to get the most interesting and quirky selection of pictures. I've certainly uh, used Francesca's uh, amazing gallery uh, probably more often than than any other uh, gallery in London. And, and this is typical of her quirky eye. Um, we see the hero Maru uh, setting out against this gorgeous bright yellow background with these two um, uh, kabutas, pigeons, turned into sort of multi-coloured, multi um, uh, sort of strange creation, avian, avian creations hovering above the hero. Um, and we get a little cutout of his house. We get the entrance at the bottom. We get very prominently the bedroom where he's... Uh, uh, his, uh, his beloved once lay and where she is no longer. Um, and this is absolutely perfect, pitch perfect uh, Deccani Ragmala art. Uh, this is where the Ragmala was born. This is the first generation of Ragmala pictures, the 1630s. Um, there would have been only uh, a, a few probably earlier than this. Uh, and again, you see this um, strange mixture of uh, uh, Muslim court art and uh, and Hindu folk art coming together uh, to produce this wonderful fantasy world of of, of love and heroes uh, and abducted uh, uh, women uh, and heroes going off to rescue them um, and I think those birds hovering above the uh, the hero um, are symbolic really of the uh, the fantasy world that you get in Deccani painting. There's none of the sort of history portraiture that, uh, that was so beloved of the moguls to the north. This is a world of, of, of heroines and heroes, uh, lovers and beloveds. Um, it exists in a world that isn't quite our world, but which touches 
uh, our world. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, a world of, 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 of fantasy and, and the fantastic. Uh, and this plus this intense sense of uh, of color uh, is the uh, is perfectly embodied uh, in this uh, miniature. And again, this is something which uh, I, I, I wish was mine. <laughs> <laughs> the final um, gallery, which really caught my eye, is the Grosvenor, um, which has made a great uh, success of bringing um, marvelous. Um, modernist uh, Indian art to London. And uh, um, Connor Macklin has uh, always got an amazing selection of, of, of Raza's uh, and uh, D'Souza's and uh, Jamini Roy's uh, up in the gallery. But um, the thing which particularly caught my eye is my wife's picture, uh, which I didn't know was here. Uh, and uh, there is a spectacular uh, Olivia Fraser of the Seven Chakras. Um, th this is one of a set of two. The other is owned by Salman Rushdie. And I didn't know this one was up for um, uh, up for sale. But it's very nice to see it here. And very nice to see also next to it, uh, a wonderful son by Lizzie Dean, who is uh, an artist who works very in a very similar tradition to Olivia, a Western artist who's been strongly influenced by Indian art and who has delved deep into miniature painting and miniature techniques. Uh, and above them both is this spectacular uh, Raza uh, called Germination or Bindu. Um, who, and I know that Raza has been a huge inspiration to both Lizzie and to Olivia. So it's very nice to see the, uh, the, the three of them together. And um, Connor has really uh, made this space his own. And, uh, uh, and there's nowhere else in London really now where you can get this uh, wonderful uh, uh, grouping of, of modernist and contemporary uh, Indian painting. And uh, uh, it's one of the most, uh, it's one of the fullest pages on the Asian Art uh, website uh, and one of the most dazzlingly colorful. And I'm very glad I don't have to make, uh, as I really had five choices, I'm very glad I don't uh, have to choose one from this, but it's, uh, it, it's a wonderful selection. And anyone looking at Asian Art London would be well advised to go there. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to have <laughs> you share all your knowledge with us. It's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure hearing about your selections for Curated By. Thank you so much.